Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and I am from eWrench.com. This demonstration is about installing Ubuntu 12.04 LTS LAMP server into VirtualBox. LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, or sometimes Python or Perl. Linux is the operating system that Ubuntu is based on, Apache is a web server, MySQL is a database, and PHP is a scripting language used to make web pages. Outcomes should be to should be able to configure VirtualBox for Ubuntu LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP with SSH Secure Shell. Secure Shell or SSH is a method for logging onto your server remotely. Install Ubuntu LAMP server with SSH. Update the Ubuntu server and then verify the install by making sure that the Apache web server is working. What we'll do is uh, start another virtual machine and see if we can see the output from the Apache web server. Requirements Ubuntu Server 12.04 Long Term Service ISO file, VirtualBox, enough memory to run both Ubuntu Server and the host operating system, 512 megabytes, my bare minimum recommendation for Ubuntu Server. You'll need more memory if your LAMP server does any work an internet connection, and you're going to need a DHCP server or some way to for your Ubuntu server to get a, an IP address. Additional info would be uh, what's new about the Ubuntu 12 and your Ubuntu server guide. In this section, I'm going to configure VirtualBox for an Ubuntu 64-bit server. This is relatively easy because VirtualBox makes most of the default settings or for you as long as you choose the correct operating system that you are installing. Just follow New Machine Wizard and you should be okay. Click New and Welcome to New Virtual Machine Wizard. Next. And I'm going to give it a name. In this case, it's going to call, I'm going to call it Ubuntu Lamp. 12 because I'm going to make this a LAMP server, but you can make whatever type of uh, Ubuntu server you wish. And the operating system, Linux. And it says version Ubuntu, but let's make sure that we go to Ubuntu 64 bit because this is going to be a 64 bit server. If you choose Ubuntu, you're going to have different default settings than you would if you choose Ubuntu 64 bit. So make sure you get that 64-bit in there. Click Next. And it says 512 megabytes. I said that's recommended minimum. But I'm going to make this a 1024 uh, megabyte or 1 gig. Click Next. Create a new startup disk. Click Next. It says a minimum on, on that last page was 8 gigabytes, but we're going to increase that and we're going to choose the default virtual disk image and dynamically allocate. Fixed size is faster, but it takes up more hard drive space. Dynamically allocated simply means that it expands to whatever you have considered as the most. For example, it had picked 8 gigabytes of storage. That means when you after you install the server it will probably have somewhere between two to four gigabytes and then gradually increase up to eight gigabytes the advantage of this simply is that you don't you're not using your hard drive um, uh, for an empty space click next and i'm going to choose 20 gigabytes will now take up 20 gigabytes of hard drive space uh, it would be dynamically allocated, start off at three or four and go all the way up if you continue putting software on to your server. And we're going to use the default location for the um, uh, virtual disk file. Click Next, Create, Create. And so here we have Ubuntu LAMP 12. And so pretty much everything is done. Once you have your new virtual machine wizard uh, run and you've created a new uh, virtual machine, there are two more settings that you have to make, uh, especially if you want to use this as a server. Uh, the first store setting is at storage. 
and you need to have this IDE controller, or your IDE secondary master, pointed towards your ISO file or where your uh, install uh, file is from uh, downloaded from Ubuntu. So to do that, you simply go set up the virtual CD drive, and then you can. Ch uh, this case, I've already got it sit sitting here, but let let's choose a virtual drive so we can see how it goes through there. And so you can see that you can go downloads wherever it is. It's just a, uh, uh, you find, if you know where it is, you can find it and then uh, have the uh, storage point to it and just click open. And so now it's it's located where, it's, uh, where it can be pointed to. And that will allow you to start your virtual machine and actually install Ubuntu. So click OK on there. The second thing is on the network, click on the network and we need to make sure that we have a bridge adapter Ubuntu normally when it the default setting is NAT or uh, address translation and when Ubuntu do I'm sorry when VirtualBox does this it'll give each virtual machine the same NAT address or IP address so make sure this is set to bridge adapter so that when the virtual machine, so virtual server starts, it'll get an IP address from a DHC per, uh, server or a router, and then we can make sure that the web server, the Apache web server, is working. So this is set to bridge adapter. Set this OK. And the next step simply is to uh, start our virtual machine and install the software. In this section, going to install Ubuntu LAMP server into a virtual box. We've already configured here a machine right here, Ubuntu LAMP 12, to uh, for, as a 64-bit server. Here is the file that's going to be loaded into it from the IDE secondary master. Uh, so that should be already set. So all we have to do here is highlight it, select Start. Click OK because that's VirtualBox. And here we have English. Just hit Enter. And we've got choices here, multiple servers installed. We're just going to do a simple server install. Just You can you can use the arrow key to come uh, through there. And simply click OK. Let's get rid of that. So again, it asks you for the uh, default language. You've got a couple of choices, actually, in English. Um, United States English, New Zealand English, and just pick United States. And so you can try to have your keyboard layboard. I'm sorry. You can try to have your keyboard layout detected. I'm going to click no because if you go through that, then you go through a number of extra screens. And layout of a keyboard varies. I'm going to pick English US again. And matching the keyboard for this machine English US so it's going to trundle along and load different parts uh, what I'm going to do is do a fast forward on this uh, as we go through this install and it'll look like a page flip. So anytime you see a page flip, you'll know I fast forward and went on to the next section. Here we are attempting IPv6 out of configuration. Configuring the network with the DHCP. Okay, so now we need a host name. I'm going to call this Ubuntu. I actually put everything in lower case. Lamp 12. Tab continue. Full name for new user. I'm just going to use my uh, first name. But you may want to put your full name, Mike, and then tab continue. Username for your account. Again, Mike. Continue. 
password. I'm going to choose a password, the same one I use for most of my virtual machines on the education environment or the uh, YouTube environment. Continue. It's going to ask that you retype your password. Encrypt your home directory. That's your choice. I'm going to pick no. And it's going to get the time. And based on your present physical location, your time zone is America, New York. Uh, you can click, if this is not correct, it'll take you to the whole list of screens. So, well, let's go through this list of screens. And then you can go and make a choice. In this case, I'm just going to leave it New York. And there's a partitioning method. You can do it manually. Set it up encrypted. I'm going to use the entire disk and set up the LVM and have it do it automatically, default choice. And select disk to partition. Remember, it's a SCSI disk uh, with virtual box. And I'm going to hit enter. And here, We've says ask you if you want to uh, write to change the disk. And so we've got to, I'll do a shift tab to get to yes, because we've got to hit yes here. So, and if I had originally set this up as a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and so here it is 21.2 gigabytes. So uh, that's good. And let's go to continue with the tab and hit enter. And if you continue to change this, list below will be written to the disk. And we're going to hit Shift tab. Yes, we want to uh, have them written, written to the disk. And installing the base system. The LAMP part will be installed later. And we'll just let it go through and uh, do its work. And if you need to use a HTTP uh, proxy uh, to access the outside world, enter the proxy information here. I do not need to enter any information for myself, so I just can click continue. And applying updates. You can, yeah, three choices here. No automatic updates, install security updates automatically, or manage system with landscape. Landscape is a, is a something that you'll have to pay for. Uh, it's also from Ubuntu, but uh, it's their security system for their servers that uh, you pay as, I think it's a monthly or yearly fee or something like that. In my case, I'm going to choose install security updates automatically for this one because basically this is going to be my uh, Ubuntu LAMP basic system that um, I'll be cloning to create other systems for. So now here's where you get your choices. Uh, I'm going to choose open SSH server. Just hit the space bar at the bottom of the keyboard. And that will put a star there. And I'm going to select LAMP server, which stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And the open SSH server allows uh, anyone to log in from the network or internet. Well, probably from the network. Depends how you have that configured. And you've got other choices you can have. Mail server. Uh, if you want to uh, use PostGRE uh, SQL database instead of MySQL, which comes with the LAMP server, you should probably choose that. Print server. SAM to file uh, server allows both Windows and Linux machines to uh, access files off this server once it's configured. Tomcat uh, Java server allows you to serve Java web pages and uh, Java. Java files for the web, uh, virtual machine host, 
and you can use a manual package. In my case, I've chosen LAMP server and open SSH server. Once it's all the way down, I hit a tab, continue, and at the end of this, we should have a running LAMP server without any problem. Okay. It's highly recommend you set a password for my SQL administrative user. So I'm going to give it a password. And make sure you don't uh, lose this or, you know, you've got all these passwords you have to remember. So, uh, and it really should be a different password than the server. So write them down somewhere have some documentation to keep track of what you're doing here. So once it's in there, I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask for you to retype it and away we go. Now you ask to just install a grub bootloader on a hard disk. We're going to click uh, a yes, take it to default system. Uh, because we start off with a clean system, so uh, we don't have to worry about uh, doing creating any problems with the master boot record. Hit yes. Our bootloader, um, which actually goes in and loads the operating system. Installation complete. So it's time to boot your system. Make sure to remove the installation media. I think VirtualBox would kind of do this for you. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll remove it. So here we are, restarting. Ask for your login. I may have mistyped my password. And so now we're in. So here we are. Uh, we've logged into Ubuntu uh, 12, our LAMP system. If you'll notice, uh, if you're reading this, you'll notice that it says uh, system information disabled due to a load higher than 1.0. Uh, that's something that can be looked at later. Basically, uh, when it first starts up, you may have a problem right there. Uh, 33 packages can be updated and 16 updates are security updates. So one thing that uh, we're going to have to do here is uh, update and then upgrade uh, the system. So s make sure that it's selected. It goes sudo apt get update. Now it'll ask you for your password. And it'll make a list of updates uh, that it can uh, that are available to you. Once it's got that list, you go to sudo apt get upgrade, and it asks if you want to continue and and do your upgrade. Just click yes, and it's going to trundle for quite a bit, especially if it's getting a uh, Linux core upgrade. Uh, and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. You'll see a page turn. So all the upgrades have been done. So let's go a, uh, do a sudo reboot. In order to verify that the uh, Apache web server is working uh, in our Ubuntu uh, LAMP server, simply start another machine and remove this and expand this machine here. And when this machine starts up, what we'll do is uh, we'll log on and see if uh, use the web uh, or the browser to make sure that everything works. So on the second machine, 
put in the password on our server we need to find the uh, IP address of the server now if you know we we've configured this as a bridge network so the router or the uh, DHCP server will get the address. In this case, it's 192.168.1.27. So, we'll start the web browser. And we'll point it toward, toward our machine. HTTP 192.168.1.27. And you'll notice that it says it works. This is the default web pager for this server. The web server is running, but no content has been added. So let's shut down this server. sudo shut down h now. Put in the password. It goes down for. That's how to install an Ubuntu 12.04 LTS LAMP server and verify that the uh, Apache web server is working. Thank you.